Hello everyone, welcome to Tech TPL, a place where you can master programming. Before moving forward to the lesson, I want to remind you that if you like the video lesson, please make sure that you subscribe our channel and enable the bell icon so that you will get notifications when new videos are uploaded. So you will never miss a lesson. I will show a short demonstration about how to subscribe to our channel at the end of this video. Keep watching the lesson. In this video we are going to discuss about resume. So people call it as resume also. What exactly is a resume? So I have written a statement or a definition of resume. Your resume is the most important document when you apply for a job. This is also called CV. CV stands for Curriculum Vitae. This is the document that lets the hiring manager understand all the relevant information about you. So when you apply for a job, you normally will be having a cover letter which we have already discussed in the previous video so those who haven't visited that video i recommend you to go to that video and understand how to make a beautiful exciting uh, excellent cover letter and come back to this video and learn about a resume so uh, actually the cover letter is an introduction or the the way the bridge to your resume resume is a real document which contain all the information about your skills your contact details and all those things are furnished for your employee employer to better understand you all right okay so what exactly is the purpose of a resume the resume let the hiring manager know that you are employable because so the hiring manager or the company will be advertising about a particular job opportunity and you have to inform them like you have these all these kind of skills to be selected to that particular post so this is a document let let your hiring manager know that you are employable and this is a document which tells the hiring manager that you meet the requirements of the organization so each job will be having its own demands for example a salesperson should be having a good communication skill so that is one of the objective or that that is one of the skills needed for a skill salesperson so all the salesperson jobs will be having an option like will be having a requirement like you are good in talking right okay so those kind of things you can mention your in your resume and the resume is a document which let the employer know that you have the right educational qualification for that particular job and this is the document which tells the employer or your future employer that inform him like you have the right skills and experience for the job advertised okay <coughs> next what must be the size of the resume so there is no set size for the resume what does that mean for example if you are a fresher you won't be having too much experience and you won't be having too much to explain in your resume so in that case you are assuming a resume can be one page okay so if you are a person with if you are a fresher but if you have lot of studies lot of educational qualifications your resume go more than one pages right okay so if you are an experienced guy think about a doctor who is having experience more than 10 years in different hospital so his resume may be having like more than three or four pages right so there is no set size for the resume so it depends on what all the skills you have and what all the skills needed for the job you are applying for okay now most of you will think like can i make one resume and send that all send that to all the job that i apply for no not really 
you can make a one basic resume but you need to tailor your resume what do you mean by tailoring the resume for each job application you have to update your resume update your detail for example most of the people in this country will be having multiple skills which we have discussed in the cover letter lesson you might be having a person which is having more than one skill so in your resume also resume also what you have to do is like you have to stress on the skills which is needed for that particular jobs okay make sure that the details in the resume matches with the job you are applying for so if you are applying for a salesperson and you finish the details of your computer skills there is no point in that right okay and you have to adjust your opening statement based on what kind of job you are applying for and you have to explain your list of most relevant experience relevant means what relevant in that particular context of the job okay most relevant experience first in your resume to catch the attention of the hiring manager and what order you need to keep the information in this resume so in that um, the same case before there is no specific order to say like you have to keep like this way but the better order the best order is given below first of all you have to furnish your contact details then you have to furnish your opening statement then you have to furnish your list of key skills you possess and what are your technical exposures or technical software skills and your career overview you can write and you can write what are the qualifications you achieved academically that means your educational qualifications and your history of employment in simple sense your experience in that particular field and your references the people who refer you or people who say good words about you these all are the informations you have to furnish in your resume okay so next we will check how to write an excellent resume for the job what all things you have to include in the resume and what all things you need not to be included in your resume so let's head into that number one sorry number one your name and contact details so this is obvious you have to write your name and your contact number more than one if there is what do you mean by more than one if there is for example you might be having a portable mobile number with you plus you might be having a home landline number so as a job seeker you never want to miss a call from your future employer so better you give your personal mobile number plus your home landline number so first they may try your personal mobile number if they didn't get you online they may try your landline so you never miss an interview call and it's really important to furnish your email address because most of the communications these days in 2019 is done through the email so make sure that you uh, make sure that you give your email address in your resume okay and do not give a header which repeats in each page i have seen so many resume which is having repeated name contact details in all the pages because that particular guy furnished these details in the header of the word document obviously it will repeat in all the pages in the word document and the hiring manager hate that and you might be thinking how i know about this one you know i am working as a corporate trainer in a reputed company in the middle east and i am working with the hr team so hr and training works together we are the people hiring the people so we receive lots of resumes and we know what is the actual way of presenting your skills okay so better not to include your name and contact details in the header i'm sure hiring managers hate that okay 
Number two, the opening statement. The opening statement is a summary of who you are. What is your qualifications? What is your experience? Okay. So the opening statements you have to concentrate on around five to six sentences without personal references. What do you mean by personal references? So personal references means stressing on yourself. So the hiring managers doesn't like employees or the applicants stressing on their themselves like like saying i did this one i have this one i am this one i am this guy i am this what 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 like that okay did not do that but instead of that you you say like did this one okay completed this one completed this work like that without stressing on yourself okay so do not feel the hiring manager like you are a marketing yourself this is a job application so you might be very clear about that and number three key skills and strength so 10 to 15 skills that you possess which is relevant for the particular job that you are applying for for example if you are applying for a salesperson job you can see below customer service problem solving teamwork task allocation supervision record management cash handling transaction processing stock control and coaching these all are the important skills needed for a salesperson so understand yourself and write your skills and make sure that you don't specify a skill which you don't have because if you specify a skill which you don't have it will make a problem in the future okay so analyze yourself understand yourself understand what are your good qualities and based on that you specify your key skills and strength number four your technical or software skills what does that mean computer is an inevitable part of your work culture nowadays you can't think of a work which directly or indirectly deal with computer right so you might be thinking like what about the laborers working in the construction industry do they use computers of course they use computers they get their payments in their bank and they use the ATM machine which is a computer to withdraw their money right so the computer is one of the inevitable part of our life is this so you have to finish what is your status in the computer which and which software you know whether you know spreadsheets like excel or open office or something like that whether you know any programming language whether you know mobile development whether you know database management all these things you can furnish or assume this will be an additional weight or additional skills you have number five personal attributes personal attributes means what kind of a person you are so be very 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 uh, what honest in this case you say like depends on the job you are applying for you can say like i'm a honest person i'm a team player i'm a quick learner or something like that the quick learner you can use if you are a fresher you can use what the quick learner i learned the things very faster so that impress your future employer and he hires you and you got the job that's it then the sixth one educational history educational history means what all the academic performance or academic things you have so you have to start from top to bottom not bottom to top so you have to furnish your highest qualification first like i have a master's then you can write i have a bachelor's i have completed my schooling i have completed my secondary education like that okay no need to mention your grades grades like what i have scored 90 percentage i have first class i have distinction i have this i have that no need to mention that one unless you told you to do that some job advertisement clearly say that tell me what the percentage you got so in that case you can mention how much percentage you got so otherwise the hiring managers are not at all interested in your 
percentage scoring because you know some people will be having high marks in their exam but they are not up to the mark okay so you can also mention your academic achievements academic achievements means what i was a team lead of this group i was playing a drama i have this certificate this helps the hiring manager understand you get along with the teams and you have a mind which is broad which accept the people to work with okay now the seventh one your employment history so when you are specifying your employment history make sure that you start with your current or most recent job current job like from same like top to bottom you go not like bottom to top not like in an ascending order you will go in descending order so you will say your current job now then you say before you were doing what then you say even before what you were doing like that you will go okay so in this case you can mention all the jobs you have done like voluntary jobs internships all those things can be mentioned all those are added advantages because the employer clearly understand or your future employer clearly understand what area you have experienced already okay now the references this is very important you can mention minimum two people as the references who can positively recommend you do not mention your enemy in this case they will give you trouble okay so always mention the people who positively recommend you it can be your previous colleagues your previous manager or your previous teacher whom you trust so the hiring manager definitely going to contact them and ask like hello how is this guy and when they say like oh he is good for employment the hiring manager get convinced about your skills so uh, make sure that you furnish the details of the person you trust okay and the testimonials also can be furnished what do you mean by testimonial testimonial means like you are getting uh, some sentences about you from your colleague or you're from your teacher or you're from your friend or the customers you deal with so if there's some if they say some good uh, words about you what you can do is like you can furnish that in your resume and you can take permission from them like I'm gonna say this in my resume so and you can put them as a references so when the hiring manager call them they say yeah true this guy is very nice okay so that land you in a better job now these are the eight things you have to furnish in your resume okay now what all things you need to be avoided in your resume number one typos or factual errors careful about typing errors and the spelling mistakes okay so as we discussed in the cover letter lesson same like that if you make too much spelling mistake in your resume obviously what the future employer will think about it. they will think this guy doesn't even know how to write an effective resume so there is no pointing point in giving job to him so do not let the hiring manager think like that so always before you send your resume make sure that you check the spelling and ask someone to read your resume before you send it who is that someone so it can be a good friend of you it can be your career advisor it can be your family members like your father brother sister or someone it can be your teacher and finally make sure that the fact that you furnish is absolutely correct do not lie in your resume for example if you are saying about a particular period from 2010 to 2012 I worked in this area and you put a reference for that a person's name and contact number and when the hiring manager called this guy this guy is saying like I don't know this guy this guy didn't work from 2010 to 2012 here so the fact you furnish there becomes wrong so always be faithful when you send your resume because you are going to work with these people in future correct 
Number two, the private information. So you don't want to specify your health status or if you are a disabled person, you don't need to furnish all these things in your assume unless they told you to uh, furnish those things. For example, if you are applying for a security guard job, definitely they will ask your health status. Health status means what? What is your height? What is your weight? And 100 meters how many time how many time you will take to uh, run 100 meters like that so those things in that particular case this is an exception in exceptional case you have to furnish your private information otherwise you don't need to furnish any private information in your resume like your health status height weight uh, do you have any disability no need okay number three images and graphics actually the hiring managers hate images so you know what you are not applying for a fashion designer job or fashion model job so there is no point in placing your photo think simply think you are a very good looking handsome guy but you don't know how to work how to handle customers and you are applying for a customer service job what is the point in in giving your picture there even if you are handsome, you don't know how to handle the customers. So there is no point in receiving the picture of you. The hiring manager is not focusing on how do you look like. They are focusing on what skills and the qualities you have. So images and graphics are not recommended in the resume resume but still you can have images and graphics and they might be not compatible with the software also nowadays all the hiring manager what they do is like whenever they receive a resume they will upload it in their particular hiring software so the software decides who is the best guy right okay so the the images and graphics you have the software may not support the images and graphics and the fancy formatting myself when i receive resume from the people i hate fancy formatting fancy formatting means what using too much stylish fonts colors and all those things resume is a document which tells about you not the skills like not a document which test your color sense please so you have to use a font which is easy to read and use the gentle colors and there is like Arial, Calibri or Verdana those are some good fonts you can use in your uh, resume. Number five lots of tables so for educational qualification one table and for academic details another table for personal details another table for skills another table no i hate that all the hiring managers hate those tables instead of tables use the bullet points those so the hiring managers are also impressed and the hiring software is also compatible with that and finally you send pdf only if they ask you to do that because the pdf are portable document format which is a read only document that means in is no software can decode it and take the information from it most of the software so better you don't send pdf unless they ask you to send pdf okay so these are the things you have to remember when you make a new resume resume and make and i believe that you understand all the information i mentioned here is very very clear for you and you might be still confused i can send you a sample resume i have lots of good samples with me as i'm working in hr and training department okay so if you want to get a sample of your resume resume is different for different people based on your year of experience so there are only four steps to get uh, the sample resume from me if you want me to personally help you to get land on a good job first of all subscribe our channel so that i can produce 
more i can give you more information about interview questions and all those steps and guide you through your hiring process and second you check the description of the video video below and find out my contact details i have written my contact details contact email in the description and you send a mail and in that mail you clearly tell me how much years of experience you have so i can pick the right resume sample for you and send it to you for your personal use okay and uh, you know what uh, this is one of my personal i have different email ids and this is one of my personal ids which i don't check always but i do log into youtube always so add a comment below this video that you send a mail for getting the sample so i do understand when, whenever you comment below my video i get a notification like this guy comment so you just comment i have sent a request to get the resume sample so i will check my email and i will forward to your email address okay thank you so much for watching hope you understand the lesson next lesson we will be discussing about different types of interview questions and thank you so much for writing once again and i wish you all success in landing a nice job thank you so much bye how to subscribe to our channel step one click on the channel icon or view channel option to go to the channel page step two click on the subscribe button step three enable the bell icon to get notified when new lessons are uploaded Congratulations, you are now subscribed and never going to miss any lesson. Thank you.